blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen and amen. That's a good thing to do, isn't it? Just turn it all over to the Lord and let him handle it. He'll take care of it. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. Everybody ready to hear the word. So let's just sing, open the eyes of my heart as Brother Daniel Martinez comes to bring the word of the Lord. I call him that. He called it this. We call him everything, but he's a good brother. So just pray that the Lord would bless and just open his eyes that he may speak to us and open our eyes. Right? Amen. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, amen. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of glory. Pour out your power in my life. I'm lifted up, sing in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. How many appreciate the Lord this Lord, afternoon? Amen. amen. It's a blessing to be here in Georgia once yeah. again. Glory. You know, Brother Dale told me already that uh, uh, first time I was a visitor, and now I'm just one of y'all. Right, right. right. So uh, um, I'm, uh, I'm grateful for that uh, welcome that I have here. Amen. And it's a real blessing to be able to speak to you all and uh, in behalf of, uh, well, and remember to be praying for the little church in Española. We believe that God Almighty is working in his bride all over the nation. So we, we, we're grateful for that. And uh, we realize that, uh, that there's a lot of be things being said, but uh, we realize that it's all in his hands. We're, everything's all in his hands. Let's, um, let's uh, uh, first of all, go to the scriptures. Let's go in Jeremiah, the second chapter, and the, uh, and the 12th, 12th verse. Jeremiah, second chapter, the 12th verse. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be, uh, what's that word, hor, hor, Horribly afraid, ye uh, be ye every uh, desolate, saith the Lord. For the for my people have committed two evils; even they have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and have hewed unto them cisterns, broken cisterns, that can can. That cannot, that can hold no water. Amen. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Our dear and precious Lord, we come before you, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we recognize, Lord, that uh, you are the living water, Lord Jesus. You are the fountain of life, Lord God. You're the only place we can tap into and receive life for our souls, Lord God. So we come before you, Lord Jesus. I want to humble myself, Lord God. And just uh, re, uh, uh, give myself, Lord, to your word, Lord Jesus, to the things that, uh, 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 that are of your word, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you bless your people, Lord, this afternoon. 
Bless me also, Lord Jesus, as we come to hear from you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You can be seated. Amen. And uh, this scripture, this little scripture that we referred to here is uh, the scripture Brother Branham gave in the, in the, in the sermon, Broken Cisterns. Yeah. And I want to, I got a little idea I want to talk about, and it's about, uh, you know, just find, finding out where we draw our energy or our power from, where we, where we can tap into and receive life. And, you know, uh, going through a, a little testimony of what happened to me there, you know, as I, I went and I, uh, I never, I didn't, Brother, De, uh, uh, Brother, uh, uh, Brother Canada, Brother Joseph explained to me that nowadays everything's electronically controlled. Right, right. Nowadays your power grid and all this stuff is electronically controlled. Right. You can stand here with your iPhone and adjust the temperature in your house. Right. You can stand here and, you're on, and turn off the lights on some houses, you know, and, and things like that. Well, and Timothy told me, he says, you know, uh, I had a, uh, he says, they're actually showing me how much power I'm using, you know. Sure. I says, well, I can't put in the main, the main breaker if I don't, if I have power there, I'll, it'll shock me. I says, so I'm going to remove the meter and quickly put it back on after I get it on. Yeah. No sooner did I do that, and we ran, ran for a main breaker. By the time we got back, it was red tagged. I was, oh, no, what are we going to do? Yep. So uh, what are we going to do now? How are we going to get the power back on? You know, we're going to have to call an electrician. We're going to have to do a lot of things to get all squared away. So nervous as I was, I went ahead and started putting the box on. And then Timothy says, you know what? It's, it's futile. You're, you're gonna, we're going to have to call an electrician. We're going to have to go through a lot of things. You're trying to get this grandfathered in, and it's not going to grandfather in now because you're, you're going to have to put everything new, and they're going to go through the whole house, and they're going to have to do, fix everything. So I was nervous, and I, I, I worked a little while on it, and I said, you know what? Let's just go home. So I left the power box there and the main breaker on and uh, I says well call in the morning and find out what it's going to take to get the power on we'll have to hire an electrician I guess well during the night I was nervous I couldn't sleep and I, I was I start, I finally fell asleep and I had a dream and in this dream uh, my pastor's friend came over this is interesting about how a, how a Pasture is, you know, that you can, you, you know, you realize you can call on your pasture. And, you know, uh, there's a little story about uh, Han Hannah in the Bible. Hannah in the Bible was, there was a, a man named Eli who wasn't even a good pasture, wasn't even a good priest. He wasn't take, he wasn't, con you know, taking care of the house of the Lord. He was, he was actually uh, 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 putting a blind eye to what his kids were doing. And not taking him off the priesthood and all this stuff. He would just, and, and the Lord required it of him. But yet a little girl named Hannah comes up and she's praying, asking God to have a baby. And she, he, he gets up there and he accuses her of being drunken. And she says, don't, don't, don't accuse me of that kind of thing. I'm crying out to the Lord. And his comment, his comment, one little comment that he made was, may the Lord give you what you're asking. And she turned around and went home, mm -hmm. conceived the baby, and had the baby. Right. What was that? It's respect. Right. Right. Respect right. for the office. Right. Right. Okay. Respect for the office, and the power of God can move through there. Right. Right. Whether you agree with the man or not, respect him, right. and you'll find out right. God's power can move through there. Sure. Right. So you watch. So nevertheless, the office... So I had a dream about my pastor, and, he, and, and, and uh, one of his friends who was an inspector, elect, electrical inspector in New Mexico in the dream, uh, was standing there, and he says, no, he says, just go ahead and hook up the way you were planning to in the dream. Go ahead and hook it all up the way you were planning to, and, uh, and uh, I'll get the power turned back on for you. Yeah. I says, oh, Wow. I wake up and I says, oh, Lord, if it was only so. Yeah. How could this happen, you know, if it was only so? Yeah. So I don't know what Tim said to the power people. And I don't know what, 
But all of a sudden, he calls up and he says, they're going to fine us 100 bucks. I said, OK, that's not bad. And 20 bucks to come and put it back on. OK. And they're going to hook it up with no questions asked. I says, what? No electrician, no nothing? So I'm there. I got up early in the morning. I couldn't sleep early in the morning. I got up there, and I was already putting the thing together. And he calls up, the, you know, about four hours later and tells me this. So I just finished hooking everything up, got the power box up, ready, ready to go. The people, people came up, drove up, put the meter back in. Power went on. I turned the switches all on. They all worked great. And no questions asked. <laughs> I just, well, praise the Lord, you know. And then I realized the scripture says, the footsteps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. So, you know, I'm not trying to do anything illegal. But I'm only trying to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my son up and going. So uh, I'm glad that the Lord's mindful of us. You know, I just really, really realized that, you know. Uh, so, so the Lord's been merciful to me and I'm so grateful. Amen. And so going back to the scripture we're talking about uh, and, and what we're looking at is, you know, when we, when we see that, you know, it rains a lot here. I had noticed uh, that it's been raining and, you know, we always praise God, showers of blessings. Amen. And inside where the Holy Spirit moves, we receive showers of blessings right, and it's still a blessing right. to us. Amen. As the Holy Spirit moves, like I heard in the song service, as the power of God moves through here, I realize there's showers of blessing. But when Brother Brown was talking about broken cisterns, he's talking about the places like New Mexico. It doesn't rain very much. And out there in New Mexico, since it doesn't rain very much, they take and they use uh, big old. Uh, sometimes you can be driving through the wilderness and in order to feed the deer and the elk water, they'll put a, a roof, tin roof. And they'll lean it all down and they'll put gutters on this roof. It's no, no more than this high. And you walk up to it and you say, well, what is this thing? And it's just a tin roof and they have a, a, a gutter on it and it runs to a little tank. Yeah, right. And you walk over to the tank and the elk have been there. There's a lot of track around it. The elk have been there drinking water and animals have been drinking water there. And, uh, and sometimes if it's raining enough, it overflows, but almost never overflowing. Uh, but they drink out of there, and you no notice that, uh, that it's, pretty, it's pretty nasty water. Uh, and Brother Brown explains that in, in the Broken Sisters tape, he goes on telling you how, you know, they, they, they would put a filter on this thing right. coming off the barn roof. And, of course, the barn, the cattle, cattle run in the, in the barn, the manure's in the barn, and they step, and dust comes up at dry seasons. The dust comes up and settles on the roof. Right. Then the rain washes it all down into right. the cistern, and people go in there to get their, their cooking water and their, and their water for drinking and their water for cleaning and all that out of the cistern right. Right. because there's no real uh, well made. Right. They're, right. They're, they're saving water as much right. as they can. Right. And... He says, sure, they can filter out the bugs and stuff, but, uh, but where does the bug juices go, you know, after? <laughs> and I've seen, I've seen a lot of uh, bugs that have been laying in the water a long time. Pretty soon there's hardly any bug and mostly juice. <laughs> you know, so it gets to be where, and Brother Brown types all this stuff as the denominational system. And he says, you know what? It's all going to be the mark of the beast. And I was listening to, uh, another tape where Brother Brown was talking a little bit about the mark of the beast. And he said that, uh, that all those demons, and this was in the, um, in the tape, uh, uh, Feast of the Trumpets. He says, all those demons that were bound up in the river Euphrates, he says, those demons came back to, in this day and age and anointed Hitler with that Roman system when they're killing Christians and actually went in after the Jews. And I thought, wow, I said, so all these demons were loosed upon the, upon the world and, 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 and they came in after the, uh, to control, control the, uh, the, they came in and did the same thing they were doing to the Christians when they were putting them to death and they were killing off the Jews. But then I started thinking a little bit about the, uh, you know, when, when, when every time that you find out that when somebody uh, 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 gets this kind of influence or this kind of, of, of energy or that kind of power that comes out, there's a move, right, yeah, you know? Right. 
this move that came through, uh, there's, a, there's a power to resist it. Brother, Branham, Brother uh, Dale was talking about the powers that were resisting all the Satan's uh, uh, powers that he put forth in the seals. Okay? And you start to see that this, this energy that came out there at the time of the, of the, of the sixth seal, you find out that they were, they were killing the Jews. And, and, and yet uh, there, there, was, there was a resistance there, a power to resist, and, and which, which it end, ended up moving over. That same power had to move over to where it was, you know, when Hitler's, uh, was, well, Hitler lost the battle and all, and all the, the demons didn't die. They still moved over, and Brother Brown called it that they moved over to the clergy. Yep, right. And the clergy was moving over to a denominational system. And that denominational system is still that old stagnant water that's coming from uh, an old cistern where they're trying to, uh, uh, and, and, and what does it do? It, it, it kind of attracts wiggle tails in it, and, and it attracts frogs, and it attracts tadpoles and salamanders, and all these kind of things that, that are attracted to stagnant waters. And you find out that the, the, the world is all moving towards this power, that's, that these powers that be. And, and you'll start to notice that, you know, if you notice in the politics realm, when you notice all the politicians and the things they're, they're trying to influence, they're trying to push towards the one world system. The, the, and you start to say, well, you know what, we do have... Like you say, they they were all ex excited about the uh, about the Y two K thing and saying, oh, everything's going to shut down and we better have generators and this and that. Yeah. And you start to find out that hey, there's a truth to it, yep. but yet there's not a truth to right. it. Right. Right. Nobody had to go have all these generators and things, no. but the truth is, is electronically they're watching where you're spending your money. Right. They're watching where, where your credit card is pushed. You know, my wife gets us a, 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 a signal every time I spend a dollar, you know. <laughs> so she gets it on her phone. And I says, well, I says, you're watching me rather close. And, uh, and I says, well, it, it doesn't matter. I says, I'm not afraid, ashamed or afraid for her to know where, where I'm spending my money. But the thing is, is, it's very, very subtle, but really quick to respond. And you start to notice that in this day and age we live in, they're going to know where you're at, what you're doing. You, you, you can't just get off the grid. And you'll find out that, there, that there's a, if you're going to, if you're going to have any kind of, a, of, a, of a, a chance, you know, when the squeeze comes on, they're go, they'll know where you're at. So the only place that you can find any relief from the, from the, uh, uh, the powers that are out there is sheltered. When you're sheltered, yeah. you know, I had, I had a friend one time that said, I, 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 as soon as I get my check, I take it all in cash. That way they can't follow me. They can't trace me. Oh. I got it all in cash. So, yeah. and, and, and they says, well, you know, uh, and I don't use a credit card and I don't use that and I don't use that. So they, so they can't follow me and they can't trace where I'm at, what I'm doing. I says, why are you so worried about Big Brother? Yeah. I says, if you're looking... If you're looking to, to, to get off the grid, if you're looking to, to, to be a, 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 a you know, a, there's a friend of mine that, that says, well, we got, at the time of Obama, he was saving guns, saving bullets and saving and getting, getting guns stocked up and everything. And he says, I got, I'm going to run up to the woods and be in a militia if in case, uh, if in case this guy goes too radical. I says... You know, some people, they take these scriptures and the things that God has said is going to be, and they take it so carnal right. yeah. that they don't recognize any of the truth right. that's gone right. in our day and age. Right. Right. They, if they'd only had the message, if they only have the truth that's Amen. come in our day and age, Amen. we, the privileged people, have been drinking from the fountain of life. We've been, we've been acknowledging the, the, the mes mes message of this hour, the, the truth that God's given us in our day and age. And we start to look and we start to see that <clears throat> in the word, when we look at the word, when we look at, 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 at the way nations are going and how the, how the, the, the powers of God are going, 
You look at, there I was, I was looking at uh, Revelations 13, 11, the mark of the beast. Let's go over there real quick. And uh, actually, I was reading where uh, it refers to America. Mm -hmm. yep. Revelations 11, and I have it here. It says, uh, Revelations, it says, And I beheld another beast came up out of the earth, and, it, and he had two horns like a lamb, but spake as the dragon. And we know the dragon is Rome. So Brother Brown called that the USA. The United States is coming into a power. Now we start to worry, wonder where is, we recognize that in, this, in the sixth seal, when uh, I'm, I'm in the sixth seal, when the persecution came on the Jews, that those spirits were released. Right. Where are they today? Right. They're, exactly right. they're still they're still here, but now it's become a power where there's there's a uniting time amongst the right. the world to get everybody into a world, one world system. Right. Right. And we realize that as Christians, we have to be in. Christ Jesus drinking from the fountain Amen. of life to be able to recognize that, that, that the, the, the things that God has prophesied in our day and age sure are bringing us to a place where we can be a people of faith. Amen. Bringing us to a place where we can recognize who we are and what we're standing for. Right. You know, we look at, the, at, at, at some of the prophecies, uh, the, the self-driving car. They've already got the self-driving car. They, I think the... Uh, the, um, what is that called? Uh, the electric car that's now out there. The, the, that has, has an option where you can just take your hands off the wheel and it'll go almost down the street. What's the name of the car? The Tesla can already go down the streets with you out driving without uh, holding your hands on the car and holding your hands on the steering wheel. They still require you to sit at the seat, but let, you can let the car drive itself. And uh, the Google car, they're saying that the new Google cars and several of the cars coming up aren't even going to have a steering wheel. Yep. You can put your back towards where the seat can be turned away from the steering wheel area. They'll be, they're, that, they're being tested in several places. And uh, Uber, I think, is already using the, 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 this, this technology wow. to, to pick up and, and, and drop off uh, people and, on their rentals. So you start to see that the, uh, the, the, the self-driving car, maybe that it's not shaped like an egg, may be one question, but you start to see that the technology is there. That's right. Absolutely. So we start to see that, hey, this day, we sit here and say, that scripture is fulfilled. In our day, when we see it, when we got a chance to see that. Well, the, another thing I saw that, when, you know, back when, when, when Israel became a nation, uh, uh, when Israel became a nation and Israel took back over Jerusalem, it caused me to just hunger and thirst. I went through Daniel 70 weeks again. I wanted, I wanted to know what, what time we were living in. I thought the coming of the Lord, I thought those bombs were going to fly in the last vision that Brother Brown was talking about because I knew that I work in Los Alamos where they're making these things. So uh, uh, I really thought that we were coming at the end, end of it all. At that time, I didn't work there, but I ended up working there. But you see, we start to look and we start to see that Almighty God's word is coming to pass step by step. Whether we, whether we put our efforts to it, no matter what we do, we can turn a blind eye to it. It still comes to pass. The word of God is going to come to pass. Uh, and and when, when we start to look at, uh, at the word, at, at how God, Almighty God, was, is going to manifest himself in our day and age, when we start to look at our, our part to play right. in this economy of God, when we start to look at where we are, we can see where the denominations are going. We can see where the, where the prophecies are heading. Right. We can see where, the, where, the, where the, uh, the, the, the word of God is taking. But we start to look, taking, taking uh, the, the world but we start to look at where's the word of God taking us as a people, as a, as a people that believe the message of this hour. What's the word of God taking us to? How can we, uh, how can we be the, the people of faith? 
How can we have the faith that was once delivered to the saints? Right. We start to realize our part to play is to believe God. Amen. How can we have faith in God? Right. You know, uh, uh, you know, Moses, when he was uh, standing there at the, at the brinks of the Red Sea, the people were saying, well, the soldiers are coming after us. Let's just deliver Moses to them yeah. so, that, so, you know, so that they'll spare us. They're already talking about delivering Moses to the Egyptians. Yeah. Throw him out there in the front of them, you know, so that they won't kill us all and we'll go back and serve the Egyptians as slaves. You know, take the leader and just throw him out there. Yeah. Yeah. And Moses says, you know, they're talking about these things. And he, he got over there behind the rock and he started to pray. Yeah. And, uh, and let's go over to Exodus 14, I think it's 14, 15. And Moses stood there. It says, uh, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore cryest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift up your rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it and, and the children of Israel shall go on dry Amen. Right. ground Amen. through the midst of the sea. Amen. You see, we as message believers now, you're Moses, you're like Moses. Yeah. You know, well, you're, you come to the place where you start to realize, you know, I have a commission here. You know, God's called me to a work. God's called you to a work. God's called you to a work to believe what he said. God's called you. You say, well, oh, I, I try to get up in the morning and, oh, my feet ache. Oh, I, I get cramps. Oh, I'm bruised. I'm hurting. I, 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 I'm, I'm struggling. You know, old age is, is hard. <laughs> you know, old age is rough. Don't get old, you young kids. <laughs> you know. And you start to realize, you know what? I get up in the morning. Yeah, it hurts. My feet hurt. My legs hurt. My shoulders hurt. My arms hurt. Yeah. Sometimes I sleep and I'm waking up with hurt. Yeah, sir. Yeah. But you know what? I, I wake up and I said, Lord, you gave Joshua the opportunity of coming into old age and never losing an ounce of his strength. Right. And I believe the same things given to me as, as your yeah, bride. Right, right. I believe your word right. is calling me to a higher calling. I believe it's Glory. letting me re experience. Mm -hmm. yes. my, my, I can believe and I can have, I can pray and I can ask God, Lord, I don't believe the pain. Right. And by golly, I'll get up whether it hurts or not. Right. You know, I'll, 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 I'll twist that muscle whether it, it's got the strength or not. Right. You know, a while back I was working on David's house, my boy's house over there in, 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 uh, in New Mexico. And for some reason, I started noticing that my arms were just losing strength and I didn't have no muscle anymore. My muscles were gone. And I said, well, what's going on? You know, why, why is my muscles disappearing and stuff? And I'm getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And I come up to that three-story, I mean... It's a, it's a two-story house with, with a pitched roof. So I get to that pitch of that roof, and I look up there, and there's like six or s about three scaffolds, four scaffolds high. And I says, I got to get up there. I don't got no muscle to get up there. My arms are weak. So I grab hold of the scaffold, and one, two, three, four. And then I... Oh, I forgot the, I forgot the tool. One, two, three, one, then back up again. So you say, well, where did your strength come from? I don't know. I believe it's from God. Whether I have it or not, I'll use it because I believe God promised me that I can be whole, well, whole, wholesome. Amen. So I, 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 I forced myself up and down that ladder. And you know what? Uh, Eventually, I started noticing my arms were coming back. Right. My arms were coming back, but the, my strength did not leave me. Amen. You say, why? Because I have faith. Amen. That's why. Amen. I didn't go to no doctor. Right, I didn't go to check up on anything. But I believe I don't have to drink from any broken cistern. Right. I, can right. believe, I can believe that I can drink from that fountain of life. Right. 
I can drink from the word of God that has promised me exceeding and precious promises. It promises me my strength. If I can see that Joshua had it, I can have it. All the way, if I go by way of the grave, I'll have it. Or I go by way of the, of, of, of the change of the body, I'll still have it. Amen? So, excuse me. So I, I recognize, you know, that, 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 that the commission I have, the commission this bride has, it's not to lay over and, and, and play dead. You know, the first church age that had to go into the ground, yeah, they had to go into the ground. That was prophesied of them. They had to give their lives. But this last church age isn't going to do that. Amen. She's got a third pull ministry. Right. It's a different calling. Right. Right. It's a different truth. It's a different promise. Right. And we have a promise to be the bride of Christ that by faith can look at the word of God and say, Lord. this is my possession. Right. This is something that belongs to me. I don't have to drink of that broken cistern and say, well, oh, I guess I have to have my pains and aches. I don't. I don't. And, and if, and if I, I, that's what, like, like what I'm telling you about Moses. You see, God was telling him, Moses, you have it in you. I called you to this work. Speak. Right. Speak and you learn. Amen. You as people, you as message believers, you that take hold of this word, you that listen to those tapes, right. you can speak. Right. Speak Amen. what you're asking God to do for you right. and he'll do it. Why? Because it's his promises. Amen. Exceeding and precious promises Amen. that have been given to this bride for this last day. Right. Amen. Amen. You no, know, we don't have, you know, uh, in the wilderness, you start to look at in the wilderness, you know, when they were after they went through the Red Sea and God parted the Red Sea. But you'll notice that in the wilderness, they were going from dry lake bed to dry lake bed yep. and they couldn't find no water. Right. Right. And the driest place in the desert is one rock sitting out in the sun, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. you know, yep. and Moses comes. And God tells him, smite the rock. He smites the rock and out of the driest right. place in the whole desert, a hot rock yeah. poured out rivers of water. Glory. The type of Christ, right. you know, the type of Christ, right. the smitten rock poured right. out water. Right. So, and, and if you look at the masterpiece, Brother Brown said that smite in that masterpiece, yeah, right, right. it says that's the smiting of the masterpiece produced the rivers, the water of life. So why, what is it we're sta standing here for? We're looking at the word of God. We're looking at what he's promised in his word. And we're realizing, hey, I got a promise. I got a commission. God's called me to a higher calling. God's called me to a deeper work. God's called me to believe his word. And by believing his word, I can take possession of what God has given in this last days. I'm, I'm living in a day when the Holy Spirit wants to pour through me more than, wants to pour through you, wants to pour through me more than I want to receive it and pour it through me. He wants to move himself through you and, 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 and let that, that, that water move through you, the word of God and the faith that was once delivered to the saints to pour through you, to manifest itself. Hallelujah. We still stand on a day and age when the word of God has become so real that we, 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 we look at that, that old story of Brother Brown saying about the Welsh revival. In the, in the Welsh revival, they go to investigate what the Welsh revival was and that policeman says, it's in me. Amen. It's in me. Amen. The Holy Spirit's in you because he promised to be in you. And that Holy Spirit is the fountain of life. Glory. That Holy Spirit is a manifestation of God's word Amen. in our day and age. Right. Amen. Amen. So we start to look at, we're not going to uh, uh, rest on the, on the, on the, uh, we, 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 we look at that smitten rock and we realize it's Jesus. And we notice that in there is our healing. Amen. It's salvation. Right. It's our, uh, it's repentance. 
It's a life-changing event. You know, like Peter one time. Well, let me read a little bit about that story on Peter. Uh, St. Luke uh, 23, 32. And I was looking for that other place because there's an, another reference to this, but I couldn't find it. But Peter, he, he, was, he was well remembered. Okay, let me read this here. It says 23, I mean 32, 32. Wait a minute, where am I looking at? St. Luke 32, 30, 23. I don't know. I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I must have written it backwards. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. It's uh, St. Luke. I did mark it here. It's uh, St. Luke. Must be 23. Where he was telling Peter uh, that uh, that you would uh, he would uh, deny him three times. That's uh, Simon. Simon. Here it is. 31, 31, 32 of uh, Saint Luke 22. Okay. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. And he, and he, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, to, to have you that you, he may sift you as wheat. But when, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fa fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother, brethren. That's strange. Now let's take a look at Peter for one thing. Peter had already told the Lord, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That event had happened. And Jesus said, You're the, you have the key. Okay? And then here he comes down to the, getting close to the crucifixion. And at the, at the Last Supper, and, and, and Jesus tells him, when you repented. Yeah. You mean, he had these great revelations, and he wasn't even repented yet. Right. Well, then he, when he went through the, through the trial of, of, of denying Jesus those three times, could you imagine, Peter? Almost every morning when the cock crows, how he felt, right. remembering what he did to the Lord. Right. You know, it must have been really hard for him all through life from there on in. But it also brought him to a place where even his shadow walking across a sick person, a sick person would get up. What made him so different? What made him, where, where was the virtue coming out of him from? Because within him was that Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit so moving in him that he would, he was, he, he, he was so willing to, to give his life for God after that that he, would, he, he asked them to crucify him upside down. Yep. It's the history says that. But then I remember, and I, this, I was looking for this scripture, but I didn't find it. It said where Peter, where Jesus had just raised from the dead, and he goes, go tell my brethren, go tell the brethren yep. and Peter. Exactly right. He reminded them yep. to remind Peter. Well, Peter was, in, Peter was probably really broken up at that moment, but okay. Jesus was mindful of him. Right. Mindful of what he was going through. Exactly right. And what a, what a feeling when he found him oh, yeah. once again uh, raised from the dead. We realize, we realize that we too are, are, have, have, have come to the place where, where we're, 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 we recognize, we, we've, we've come to the place where we recognize that our life is nothing, but our life in Christ is everything. This bride, is the bride of Christ's ministry, 
what you're called to as, as believers in this word of God that's come in our day and age to take him at his promises and to bring you back to the original word that was once delivered to the saints is everything. It's everything. It's, it's what the whole world is, is waiting for. Amen. Brother was telling us about the, about the resurrection. And you start to realize they without us. If you go to Hebrews, you find out they without us can't be made perfect. They, they need us. They need us to be in that perfection that was once delivered to the saints. They need us in the book of Acts. They need us having faith and believing God, Amen. believing his word, taking him at his promise, Amen. claiming what he said about us, right. claiming what he said to us Amen. and speaking the word. Amen. 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 You start to realize that. Amen. <clears throat> the woman at the well. Uh, St. John 4, 7. I don't think I gave that to them back there. St. John 4, 7. John 4, 7. And Jesus, uh, I said 4, 7, 4, 13. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever shall drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up Amen. to eternal life, to everlasting life. Amen. We start to realize, what is this? Right. It's the Holy Ghost that God's right. given right. to us in this day and age. Right. The Holy Ghost that has brought us to a reality yeah. of a word of God that's been presented to us as a living sacrifice, right. a living manifestation right. Something that's been given to us. It's God Almighty coming down to live in you. Amen. Right. And at, wanting you to speak his word. Glory. Wanting you to manifest the third pull. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. And how can we manifest the third pull? It's by taking in. It's faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Amen. As you take in the word of God, it brings you to a higher calling. Right. Right. Hallelujah. We realize that Almighty God's bringing us to, 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 to catch the vision. You know, one time, uh, there was a, 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 a you know, the, the Catholic Church, well, they, they have, uh, they call uh, uh, visions of Mary, they say. And they said that uh, uh, one, in one place, in, in a desert place, that Mary appeared and water started flowing out from a rock. Well, they put a statue there, and, and that's the very same place, and it happens to be a city has grown around that area, and, uh, and, they, and the water continues flowing out of the rock. Well, there was a guy walking over there, and this is, the, it was around, uh, it was over there in, in, in I don't know, where is it, uh, Vatican City or someplace over there in, in Rome. There was a guy walking around looking, and, 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 and people were getting bottles of water and hauling it home, and taking holy water from there. And he started looking closer and he saw that there was a copper pipe sticking out of the ground. Yeah. They were getting city water and giving it to everybody. Yeah, I yeah. And I thought to myself, that, ha that sounds like our own ho back home. And in, uh, in our place, we have a place called the Santuario. And in this Santuario, there's a, there's a spot that they call it holy dirt. Well, everybody gets this holy dirt and there's, there's stories and and, and, and a bunch of, uh, uh, what do they call those uh, uh, crutches hanging on the wall with their stories and all that laying around there. And I went in there just to look at the old sanctuary, the old church it was. And I look in there and I see all those things and I read a couple of them and I says, wow. I says, people really have faith in this dirt. Yeah. And they keep taking the dirt and taking the dirt out of this hole in the little cups. And I thought, Wow. I says, well, uh, you know, they, I guess if they have faith in that dirt, I guess it's okay. 
But then uh, I find out later on that a friend of mine was, uh, was, was used to walk barefoot down there to the santuario and, and, uh, and, 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 and worship there. He was real Catholic. And one day he was walking barefoot through the arroyos there and the, behind the church and he saw an old man picking up a couple of sacks of dirt. And he says, what do you do with that dirt? He says, all the people take so much dirt out of that hole, I have to fill the hole back up. <laughs> and they all think that it's a miracle that the dirt never runs out. <laughs> well, you see, what it is, is this isn't a put on. There's nothing put on about this message of this hour. This truth that's been given us, it's given to you. You know, a brother Branham was was called, and they told him a friend of yours has just gotten his 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 he got crushed, his spleen's broken, his liver's busted. He says he got crushed with almost two tons of weight over his back or something like that, and his liver and spleen are busted out, and he's in the hospital and he's asking you to come pray for him. And Brother Brown says, well, who am I to go pray for him? He says, I haven't had a vision or anything. He's talking to his wife. And he says, I haven't had a vision or anything. How can I go just pray for the, bro- the, the man? He says, you know, if Jesus was here, he says, his hand, he's, he's got holy hands. He would come down here and he'd, he'd lay hands on him and the brother would just rise up. He says, but who am I? He says, I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. Who am I and how could I put my filthy hands on this man and, yeah. and, and raise him up? I'm, I'm nobody. I'm just as bad as he is as far as sin is concerned. And all he says, I'm, I'm nobody. But if I had a vision, he's talking to his wife. He says, but if I had a vision, then I know God was sending right. me to go do it. And, and then he started thinking, he says, but it's the same filthy hands. He says, it's the same filthy hands. And then he says, and you know what? The scriptures promise says, lay your hands on the sick and the sick will recover. It didn't say whether you had holy hands or not. It just says, lay your hands on the sick. So he says, I'm going. And he went over there to the hospital. He prayed for the man. And within the week, the brother was in church. So you start to look. He says, if you... Take him at his promise. His promises are in your word, in the word. His promises are given to you. If you take him at his promises, you got the right to lay your hands on the sick and the sick will recover. You got the right to, to put it this way. The apostle Paul took a prayer cloth and sent it off to the sick. You got the right to grab a prayer cloth, send it off to the sick. You know, I had, I had one of the prayer cloths here in my Bible that uh, Brother Brandon prayed for the uh, 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 brother, uh, that brother, uh, uh, should I say, Perry Green had, had uh, given to us when he was here in Georgia. And, uh, and I thought, wow, it's a prayer cloth that Brother Branham had. And my wife says, you look at that prayer cloth like you're a Catholic. <laughs> I says, no, I don't look at it. But Brother Branham did pray for it. <laughs> pray on it for the sick and afflicted. And, uh, and uh, you know, I, I thought about that prayer cloth and stuff. And you know what? I don't need that prayer cloth particularly. I need to believe the word. And I will pray over a cloth and send it to the sick and afflicted. And they'll get well. Because we take, we take him at his word. What Paul could do. Brother Branham could do what Paul can do, Brother Branham could do, and the bride can do because they have got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It dwells in you. Amen. So let's stand to our feet as we go before the Lord in prayer. Amen. I just want to admonish the bride of Christ to take him at his promises. We realize that God's called us. The key to the door is only, Brother Brown's theme song, only believe. All things are possible. The key to the door is faith. When we can believe, when we can have faith, to believe what he promised is ours. As bride of Christ, as people that believe his word. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Our dear and precious Lord and Heavenly Father, 
We're so grateful, Lord God, that in this day and age, Lord God, you brought a people to a place, Lord God, that they are coming to the place, Lord God, that they can take you at your word, Lord God. We've, we're drinking from the fountain that never will run dry. We're drinking from that living water, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, we believe, Lord God, that you've given it to us, Lord God, so we can use it, Lord. Like you told Moses, you got a commission, speak and go forward. You're telling us, go forward, speak and do what, what the word says you would do in this day and age. Lord Jesus, we believe you, Lord God. We have faith in you, Lord God. We don't want to accept any box of snakes that the devil wants to give our way, Lord God. We want to believe what you promised, Lord God. Lord, we love you. We pray you be with your people, Lord Jesus. Bless us each and every one. If there's any sick and afflicted, Lord God, raise them up, Lord Jesus, because you promised you would. Lord God, we pray for them. We, we lay our hands on them, Lord Jesus, because we believe your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Brother Dale. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give our brother a good name. Yes, I believe it, don't you? Amen. What do we got, brother? 312. We're written 312. Anybody have a need? The altar's open. We hear the word and we believe it. We accept Would it. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you read all of victory when? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power. We heard a great message. Now come and see the benefits of it. There is power, power, wonder working in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary. Thank you, Lord. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, whatever we have need of. Power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working in the precious blood of the land. See, it's called if you say, would you be wiser, if you say, we know the prophet, we believe what happened with him. He'd speak the word, it'd take place. But that wasn't just for him. That was for everybody that'll believe it. So just say it and march, march right on forward. I would wonder working in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working in the precious blood. See, I heard a man say one time, he said the third pull, you heard this before, the third pull was for Brother Branham and the Lord Jesus only. Well, that sounds good. But I just happened to read one day where the prophet said the third pull was for the bride and the church and to the totally lost. It's for anybody that'll believe it. Thank God for the word. Because we can believe it and say, thank you, Lord, and just move on. How about anybody have a need? Go ahead, brother. What do we got? I'll fly away this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Just make sure you tell our brother how much you appreciate the, the message. We believe it. Oh, I fly away to a on God's celestial show. What about it? You have a need? Come and let's put it under the word. Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. And you see what will take place. I came down. Hallelujah. Bye.
I'm going to die, I'm going to be raptured. What about you? You know, you know somebody's going to say that one day and it'll take place. Well, why don't we believe we're the one that can say it? Somebody will. Well, why not just start saying it? Say, thank you, Lord. Every day I get up and I thank God for every day that I get. And I go to bed at night, I thank God for what he's given me how he's took care and what he's done and all, you know. I want him to know that I love him. I want him to, to know that I believe him. See, all he wants us to do is believe him. What about it? Let's make sure and tell our brother how much you appreciate the word of the Lord because we believe it, all right? They'll be traveling back home in a couple of days, so pray the Lord would take care of them, give him a safe journey, and the family and all, Amen. Father, we thank you for tonight, and we thank you for your love and your grace unto us. Thank you for the word that our brother has poured his heart out unto us, and we believe you, Lord, because we know that thy word is true, that it's for us. All things are for us. If it's for anybody else, why can't we believe it's for us also, Lord? And just have your way with us. Guide everybody. Be, be with our brother and sister as they travel on back home in a couple of days, Lord, and give them a safe journey. Be with everybody tonight going home and give let everybody be home and safe and sound in you. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good day, man. Some glad morning.